Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy, and here is the question for this video. So the question is, what is 7 18 more than 3 fourths? And I'd like you to do this problem without the aid of a calculator, but if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second, and of course, I'm going to show you the complete uh, solution. Uh, also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in, uh, in the description below. And if this video is exciting and helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so what is 7 18 more than 3 fourths? Well, it seems a little confusing, right, when you read this. But really what we're talking about here is a fraction addition problem. So let's go and take a look at the answer. The answer is 1 in 5 30 seconds. Now, I typically don't recommend that you write your answer as a mixed number fraction, but in this case, I made an exception. I'll show you uh, the equivalent answer, but here, uh, 1 and 5 30 seconds, this is what we call a mixed number fraction. Let's just do a quick, quick review on fractions. If I have 1 third, if I have 5 fourths, and let's say I have 3 and 1 half, uh, this is what we call a proper fraction because the denominator is bigger. This is the bottom number is bigger than the top number. But when you have the top number, the numerator, is bigger than the bottom number, the denominator, this is called an improper fraction. And we can write improper fractions as mixed number fractions. So this is a mixed number fraction. So how do I write a mixed number fraction as an uh, improper fraction? Well, you should know how to do that. Matter of fact, let's just do this real quick for this problem, just for uh, those of you that uh, might have gotten this answer correct, and uh, you wrote it this way. But if I wanted to write this mixed number fraction as an improper fraction, just remember what we need to do is take this number, the denominator, multiply it by this number. So 36 times 1 is what? Well, that's 36, and then you're going to add 5. Okay, so what's 36 plus 5? Well, that would be 41. So it would be 41 over 36. Okay, so this is the equivalent answer of 41 over 36 as an improper fraction. But there's a lot of people out there that just love to write their final fractions as mixed numbers. You probably had a math teacher that forced you to do that. I'm going to suggest uh, that you um, kind of write your uh, answers as uh, improper fractions. Okay, just make sure they're fully reduced and not mixed numbers. Okay, and of course you need to know how to do that. And if your teacher asks you to do it, then you, then of course you have to do it. Now, why do I say that? Because uh, over the decades and tens of thousands, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of papers and quizzes and homeworks that, that I've seen, I've seen this happen so many times and there's just so many it's a very sad story when it comes to mathematics here are some tears from the, uh, the student they will have the answer correct don't they will have done this correct but they're like you know what i want to take it to the next level for my math teacher i'm going to go ahead and express my um, improper fraction as a mixed number and then they go through this process I'm going to show you this in this problem how we go from here to here they do this and then they make a mistake and then they turn in the wrong answer maybe they hear that they have one in three over 38 or something you know like this which is incorrect but they had the right answer here okay then of course the tears come out and you know they're like I knew that I knew that please Mr. Math teacher give me my points back don't take them away from me etc etc but anyways listen anything I tell you in my videos okay or uh, I'm telling you from experience as an insider okay uh, insider meaning I am a math teacher right I make math tests I grade uh, quizzes and tests and whatnot so I see all the mistakes so this is just a strong kind of tip uh, for those of you out there right so remember I'm going to suggest just make sure your answer is prop, uh, properly reduced in an improper fraction form. Don't take the uh, extra initiative to write it as an uh, improper or a mixed number. Okay, but if you got this problem right, let's celebrate. Uh, you know, either form with as a uh, improper fraction or a mixed number. I'm definitely going to give you an A plus, a 100%, and a few stars to tell your friends and family that you are indeed a fraction expert. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. 
And uh, we first have to just kind of read the prom, right? Now, it seems a little bit confusing. We're like, what is 7 18 more than 3 fourths? And some of you might be saying, why can't we just like, you know, just say what you want to say. Don't make it any more confusing than it has to be. But what is this saying? Well, this type of problem is a common type of problem that you will see, especially when you're starting to learn like algebra, like pre-algebra course uh, courses, because what we're trying to kind of get you to do is to learn how to translate uh, various phrases into mathematics. Okay, so what is 7 18 more than 3 fourths? Well, let's interpret this, okay? So 7 18 more than what? Well, then 3 fourths, right? So 7 18 more than 3 fourths, what does that mean? Well, here is 3 fourths, and then 7 18 more would be what? We'll just add 7 18 on to the 3 fourths. That is 7 18 more than 3 fourths. So really what we're talking about is adding these two fractions together. Now, that might have seemed, that might have seemed intuitively obvious to all of you. Like, oh yeah, we got to add these fractions. And that's great, but you still need to really make sure you understand um, kind of the structure uh, structure of these phrases. This is a simple problem, but these problems can get much more advanced. And especially when you're dealing with differences, so i.e. subtractions, the order of the way you write things really does count because you got to really be paying attention to the details. But this is 7 18 more than 3 fourths, 3 fourths plus 7 18 So now the problem is this, 3 fourths plus 7 18 Can you do this problem? Can you add fractions? Well, what does it take to add or subtract fractions? Well, you need to have the same denominator, right? So here we don't have the same denominator, so we're going to have to find the LCD. Now, I'm just showing you, uh, showing you here real quick uh, how to find the LCD. If you need help with fractions, you must, must absolutely know how to deal with fractions. I'm going to suggest a couple things. One, I have a ton of videos on fractions on my YouTube channel. Matter of fact, I got uh, fraction videos that have uh, millions of views. It's kind of crazy, right? That's just an indication of how many people don't know fractions well enough, right? Because they're always searching, hey, how do you do this? Which is good, okay? So you need to know fractions. But I'm going to suggest that you check out like my pre-algebra or my math foundations course to really get into like a formal course of instruction for basic mathematics. You could really, really strengthen your math skills. But anyways, what we need to do here is prime factor the denominators. Some of you might be like, oh yeah, I can see the LCD is 36. That's what the LCD is here. Okay, so if you knew that, that's great. But here, the prime factors of 4 can express that as 2 times 2 or 2 squared. And the prime factors of 18 is 2 times 9 or 2 times 3 squared. Or 2 to the first times 3 squared is the same thing as 2 times 9. So I write this this way as a quick review on how to find the lowest common denominator. So I need to find the highest. I need to have the product of the uh, all my prime factors I have between my two denominators represented in my LCD. So here I have 2 squared. Here I have 2 to the first. I need to take the highest power of uh, 2. Okay, so which one do I take? Well, I take the highest power. That's 2 squared. And then I got to have this represented as well. So 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 times 9 is 36. Now, this is like a real quick explanation of how to find the LCD. Probably too fast. If some of you out there, if you're like, you know, just like, what is this guy talking about? You know, this is why I don't like math. You go too fast. I don't, listen, listen, I'm just telling you right now, this is a super fast overview of this stuff. I break this stuff down nice and easy in other videos. Okay, so hopefully you know how to find the LCD because you won't be able to do, you know, uh, mathematics, you know, you'll, uh, at the middle school level or beyond. Okay, not, it's kind of not that difficult to do. But anyway, so let's move on. So the LCD is 36. So we're going to have to rewrite these fractions uh, such that the denominator is 36. So here we have 4, and here we have 18. So we're going to have to go from a 4 to a 36 and an 18 to a 36. So we're going to have to, again, rewrite the denominator such that the denominators are is the lowest common denominator. Okay, so let's take each one of these fractions one by one. So how do I go from a 4 to a 36? Okay, so 4 to a 36. Well, I can go from a 4 to a 36 by multiplying that 4 by 9, right? So 9 times 4 is 36. But if I multiply the denominator by 9, I also got to multiply the numerator by 9. So that's going to be 9 times 3 is 27. So the fraction 3 fourths is equivalent to this fraction 
27 over 36. Okay. All right. So how do I go uh, from 18 to 36? Easy. Just multiply by 2. So I've got to multiply both the denominator and numerator by 2. So I'm going to have the equivalent fraction of uh, 14 over 36. Okay. So now once you have the same denominators, and again right here, let me go erase this. We have 36 and 36. Uh, what we could do is simply just add the respective numerators. So 27 uh, plus 14 is 41. So 41 over 36, that is it. Okay, this would be the final answer. If you turn this in, you'd be so happy. You'd get like an A plus. Your teacher would be like, man, you're the best. You must be watching, you must be watching that guy on YouTube. Whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. But listen, this is what I'm talking about, right? Some of you are like, okay, I'm not done yet because, you know, you look at this as an unsatisfactory fraction okay as long as it's reduced it's perfectly fine but a lot of you are bothered by this numerator being larger than this denominator so you want to turn it into a mixed number so how do i do that well we literally have to take this 41 and divide it by 36 and we got to do some old school paper and pencil division right to do this so 41 divided by 36 well, 36 goes into 41, 1, so that's going to be 1 times 36. Subtract the 36, we have 5, so we have a remainder 5. So 36, uh, uh, 41 divided by 36 is 1, remainder 5. So we write that as 1, and our remainder becomes our numerator, and our 36 here is our uh, denominator. So that's 1 and 5, 30, uh, 5 over 36. Okay, so again, this is how you convert an improper fraction into a mixed number fraction. This is something you absolutely need to know how to do uh, for sure. I'm not saying that you don't need to know how to do this. Uh, I need, and also to go from a mixed number to an improper fraction, what I'm saying is only do it when you are asked to do it. Okay, this is a perfectly acceptable answer. Just make sure that uh, any fraction uh, that you have when you are done, make sure it's fully reduced and simplified. Okay, so that is very important. All right, so hopefully this was a fun and interesting video. And, uh, you know, maybe it highlighted some weaknesses you have with fractions. Don't feel bad about any weaknesses you have in anything, okay? If you're weak in, you know, other areas of your life, it, that just identifies a place for you to improve. We all need to improve, okay? It's all relative. So, yeah, you know, you know, maybe I'm, I'm super good in fractions, but listen, you know, there's a level of mathematics where, you know, I'm tested to my maximum ability and I got to really work on, you know, um, you know, really studying and improving and practicing if I want to continue to grow, let's say, in my math skills. OK, but if you want to continue to grow with your math, math skills, well, then you just need to get yourself into some good instruction. OK, don't try to wing it. Don't like, OK, I know a little bit about this, so therefore I must know that that's the worst thing to do. So if you're struggling with fractions, uh, start with my YouTube videos, but I'm going to really encourage you to check out like my Math Foundations course. I teach you everything you need to know about fractions and basic mathematics. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.